question. What does an old ghost story have to do with our use of the pine tree, a seasonal greeting, and the Christmas turkey? Stay tuned and find out. What does a 180-year-old ghost story have to do with our use of the pine tree, a cherished seasonal greeting, and a traditional Christmas turkey? Christmas in England prior to that time was much more uneventful than today. It was just one of many holidays celebrated, and it had its origin in the Yule, meaning midwinter. The main tradition was to burn the Yule log to chase away the evil spirits and encourage the return of the sun in spring. The church managed to make the Yule represented as Christ. Parties were sometimes thrown, but overall it wasn't really much of a holiday and all until the arrival of one man. Inspired when he intended a charity event as a speaker, Boz, as he called himself, under his pen name, threw together a mishmash of morals, pagan rituals, and Christianity in his tale of a wealthy, greedy man haunted by spirits, and introduced the character of Little Fred, a sick, sickly, poverty-ridden boy. As Boz was writing his story, he later wrote that he would wander through the dirty streets of London during the the Industrial Revolution era, where there would be a sharp division between the wealthy and poor. Laughing and crying as he wrote, when all sober folks had gone to bed. He finished his story in a matter of six weeks. During this time, his diet consisted of two tablespoons of rum flavored with fresh cream for breakfast, a pint of champagne for lunch, and for dinner, he would drink a raw egg beaten into a tumbler of sherry. People either saw him as a madman or a literary genius. It turned out that that story wasn't immediately a huge hit, and books were sold out by the third day. Boz made Merry Christmas and the Christmas turkey into a tradition, and by the popularity of his novel, persuaded Queen Victoria and her German husband, Albert, to introduce some of his Germanic culture into this newly reborn holiday, which included the Tannenbaum, or Christmas tree. Now, if that story sounds vaguely familiar to you, it should. You see, Boz, at the last moment before publishing, changed the name of that poor boy, and the rest is history. His story not only set in motion the beginning of Christmas as we know it today, but also added a new term to the English language, named after the main character. That character was called Scrooge. Little Fred became Tiny Tim. The story was A Christmas Carol, and Boz's real name was Charles John Huffman Dickens, or as we know him today, Charles Dickens. And now you know the rest of the story. Okay. I'm going to show you now how to make some uh, homemade ornaments for on your tree. Now, the first thing I did, we're doing the tree in gold this year. So, I'll show you what we do. Um, well, what we did is uh, we take a key, and this isn't one we used. It's too big and too heavy to fit on to work on the tree because it drags it down but i'm doing this so you just can have a example of what you have to do okay and pretend like this ring's not on here all right what you do i got this this string and it's got wire filaments in it so you can kind of bend it when you put it on there to uh 
to face out in any direction you want. Or you can use green florist wire, which also works and you don't see the 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 string on it then. It just blends right in with your tree. And once again you just put it through and you tie it in a knot, leave a little space to hang it with, and you just tie it with a knot and cut it off and there you go. Now after I have the string on or even before you can do it you take and uh, use a Brillo pad and I'm not going to show you how on this key because it is cast iron and if I if I scraped it now it would just rust in those areas but um, you take your key you rub over it um, just to get the high marks and that brightens it up. It makes it look like a, a real, a nice gold collar. It just brushes good on the areas that would get your wear and tear. Leave the cracks. Anywhere there's a crack, leave it. And that just adds uh, a little bit of, uh, I don't know, a little bit of, well, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> makes the key stick out more. Okay, and I'll show you an example of those a little bit later. All right, the next thing I'll show you, and I'll show you pictures of what they should look like. But I have these, they're candy molds. There's a, it's a fancy design on these. And there's one I have a dragon I'm going to be using. Anyway, I use paper clay, creative paper clay, this is called. And what you do is you just take it, it, it air dries, so that makes it nice. You take it and you just cram it down in the holes as best as you can and then try to smooth it off um, then let it dry for just a little it's it's air dry so let it set up just a little then you take your your ball that you're going to use paint these in a flat ba flat black okay and uh, before you glue it on, you want to paste these, paint these with a gold, or whichever color you prefer. Okay, and before it's dry completely, what you do is you wrap it around your Christmas ornament. And you you want to give it that shape whenever it dries. That would fit your your Christmas ball. And you put, uh, like, you can tie it or put a rubber band around it. Anything just to hold it in place and until it dries. Now, once it's dry, all you have to do is pop it out of this mold. And you glue it on to your Christmas ball. It's that simple. And you can get these candy forms online. And they don't cost that much. Um, but okay. Alright. And the next one is a little bit more sloppy. I'll warn you. What you do is get some Elmer's glue. Just plain all-purpose glue. Don't have to be Elmer's. Can They make generic brands. And you water it down just a little bit. You want a nice paste consistency, but kind of a watery paste. Okay. And you mix it in a bowl. You, you use twine. You dip it in the bowl. Let it soak it up real good. And then what you do is you blow up 
a balloon. You get little small balloons. And you, well, however big you want your, your ornament to be. But you take your balloon and it's really simple. After it's been soaked, you just start wrapping it around. And what you want to do then is cover over your string to kind of hold it in place. And you keep wrapping. And you can put it however you want to. You can make a fancy design. You can do it just randomly. You want to leave um, gaps in it though. Although I have seen people just start at the bottom and just twine it around. You know, and leave no gaps in between. And that looks pretty cool too. But this is how I do them. Then after you, you hang it up to dry. And after it dries, just stick a pin in it. Pop it. And pull the balloon out and you have your nice ornaments and I'll show that here coming up too also for Easter you can use these get a bigger balloon a much bigger balloon and do the same thing except you want to leave like a hole you want to wrap it around and leave a gap in there big enough to put in what you might want to put in and um, pop it let it dry let it dry pop it and kind of uh, flatten the bottom okay and then you fill it full of uh, Easter grass the fake Easter grass um, and put your candy in there or whatever you feel like doing it's up to you and I used to do those as a youngster and they turn out pretty nice. You can even spray paint them afterwards if you want. All right, and I, I might tape some of this as it's being made if I can, but uh, those are the steps. That's all you need to do, real simple. Except this one, it's a little bit sloppy, but uh, aside from that, it's real simple. Oh, and I almost forgot. Now, here's another one. It's real simple. You take a piece of grapefruit, you slice it, well, you take a grapefruit, you slice it real thin. Then you put it in your oven on lowest heat. With the door open, partly. Okay, and you let it you let it dry until it becomes like uh, translucent. Okay, then you take metal wire or so, poke it through at the top, and hang it on your tree. And you know what? Th these come out looking like stained glass windows. It is so cool. But you have to get the green, the the pink grapefruit, because the the ordinary grapefruit's just not that pretty. Um, in this case, I had a seed that fell out, so I probably won't be using this one on the tree. Um, but you and you want to use a couple grapefruits, depending on how many you want. There will be some that don't turn out very good. Um, like this because of the seed and you have to be careful not to cut it too thick because it won't dry right but uh, there you have it the first 20 people in the comments below who says I want a reading you have to say that in your comment I will sign you up and I will be doing 20 readings as a bonus. Out of those 20, one of them will be randomly picked for a full reading. I'll read the dice. I'll read the tarot. I'll read the runes. Um, I'll even read uh, the oracle cards. A special person picked out of those will receive that. Now, the people that get 
a reading, you have your choice. You can have either a rune reading, you can have a tarot reading, which will be longer than what I've been giving. I've only been giving three cards. I will give you the full spread to really break it down. Or you can have dice or uh, the oracle cards. And those two, I will be picking um, several oracle cards instead of just the one for everybody. If you want an oracle reading, okay. Here's your options. You may pick one of these, and I will do several card readings out of them. But you can have, for oracle cards, you can have the Mystic Shaman Oracle. Uh, not that one. Um, Botanical Inspirations. Black Moon Astrology Cards. Whispers of Love. I have Shamanic Healing. Madame and Dora's Fortune Cards. And they're falling out of the box. I'll fix it later. We have the Archangel Oracle Cards. We have Past Life Oracle Cards. Sorry, there's a glare. We have the Gilded Reverie Les Normand Cards. They're kind of a romantic deck. Oh, let's see. We have Moonology. The Soul's Journey. Angels and Ancestors. Native American Oracle Cards. I Ching. And finally, uh, rune oracle cards. I do read the runes also, but these are rune oracle cards. I can read those if you'd rather. So if you want an oracle reading, tell me out of all those I just listed, tell me which one you want. All right? If you want to write any messages, you can leave a comment at the bottom of the video. Down below there. Um, if you just want to comment, that's fine. If you want to comment and add, I want a reading and what kind of reading you want. Um, or you can just say, I want a reading and what kind of reading do you want? Like I said, if you want oracle cards, you can say, I want an oracle card reading out of any of the decks I just listed. All right. You all have a uh, great day. Peace. Remember, believe.